Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Krakenfall and today we are in... Space! So today we are reacting to Let's Game It Out. I built an unethical zoo on the moon. I have questions. <laughs> First of all, how did they get to space? Like the process of getting animals, the process of getting humans to space is not a simple one. You have all the G-forces when you're, you know, because you have to overcome the gravity of Earth, which means you have constant acceleration that puts pressure on your cardiovascular system. You have to have a strong heart. So, I mean, this is this is a planet zoo game. It's kind of simulation game for for building. So it's probably not going to have you go through and get the get the animals to space. It's been done in real life. The Sputnik missions sent up dogs and monkeys to space, but it didn't really turn out well for most of them. So I am already concerned about the animals in Josh's moon zoo. Has Josh already committed crimes against nature? <laughs> like it, it, it seems like a, a strong possibility. Did the giraffes that died in the first Planet Zoo video respawn up here? I mean, that would be the easy way. <laughs> did, did all the animals in Josh's zoo obey the run sign and end up here somehow? Is, <laughs> is Josh's influence like an alien swarm that it just is expanding, corrupting planet to planet, moon to moon? Or is it like Ker Kerbal Space Program where Josh has just shot off rocket after rocket until he gets it right and finally gets him up there? I have not played Kerbal Space Program. But that is one that I have seen you mention, you all in the comments multiple times. I have never played Kerbal Space Program. I've kind of avoided it because it seems math heavy. And honestly, when I get home after work, <laughs> I just want to melt on my keyboard and relax. I've been told it's probably something that I'll like. It is going to go on, on my backlog for sure. So every time I try and predict what's going to happen in a Let's Game It Out video, I am wrong. <laughs> like, for instance, the, the video where I was super worried about the elephants, I was trying to predict how many transgressions against the elephants. And I was like, Josh, don't you do it. Elephants are <laughs> elephants are precious and are worth are endangered. Don't you do it. And then I was wrong. It was like a tame video against the elephants. So I have no idea. I mean, I've said this before. I feel like I'm a broken record. I have no idea what Josh is going to do. We can just guess this giraffe in this thumbnail is not wearing a helmet. So how is it breathing? Is it going to die? Are all the giraffes going to die when they get spawned into the moon's atmosphere? Sphere, probably. Who knows? Is he going to kill every animal that he puts on the unethical zoo? It's an unethical because they just die out in the open, open air. <laughs> is it, is it actually the moon? It could not be the moon. It could be just kind of a backdrop with stars and then just like snow on the ground. And there are moon related buildings and stuff. So maybe it is the moon. I don't know. So let's, let's, let's land on a prediction. I'm going to flip a coin. All right. Heads, it's the moon. Tails, it's not. It's heads. Okay. Let's predict that that this is actually the mood. We'll see how we do. The other thing I'd like to do is rate Josh on a scale of one to alien overlord. As Josh's corrupting influence spreads throughout the galaxy, we are all in danger. And then last thing, we're, we are doing bingo again today. I did update bingo with some of your suggestions, so thank you. Go ahead and put more down in the comments if you see anything that you think Josh does regularly and would be fun to call out in a bingo card. I'll add it to the list and it'll get added to the bingo. All you got to do is head over to the description or the link right here. And when you click that, you get this screen, which is the bingo baker bingo system. And uh, just generate your card. You get a unique card that'll be different than mine. I've got Grace's entered the chat, uh, which I added back. Sponsored by Vehicular Chaos, just Josh style gig overkill. So when he does like a hundred thousand nuclear reactors or something is satisfactory. All those things. Animal cruelty is a given in this one. It's probably a free space like all you were saying. There are some tougher uh, cards in here. Shiver Me Timbers. I don't think he says that that often, but he does say it. But yeah, check that out and uh, come play bingo with us. And last thing, if you haven't watched this video, please go watch the video first on Josh's channel. I'll put a link right here and it's also in the description. Go ahead and give Josh the views that he deserves. You know, this is going to be a cut down version of the video. I definitely don't use the whole video in, in here. It's just for the reaction. And also I do like to talk about the things that Josh does that either break the game or I'm a software developer. So, you know, it, it's, it's fun to kind of guess what technical things are going on in the video that he's doing. Please go watch the video first if you haven't already and uh and let's get going hey there it's josh welcome back to let's game it out we're back with more planet zoo ah uh, here we are again a fresh canvas for new insanity as always this is the entrance to our zoo you know what i never stopped to look at look at this awesome mural back here this is just the default thing that shows up with every <laughs> zoo you make so i feel like it's probably our civic duty to change this up a little bit ah that's better that's right run <laughs> well, you while can. you can i feel like this accurately describes what to expect when you get to the park like non-stop googly eyes because that's the look when you've just seen too much you know what they're probably 
<laughs> looking at though this wall over here we're gonna display with pride i kind of want to make that an emote <laughs> a reaction gif or something that's funny too much. You know what they're probably looking at though? This wall over here. We're gonna display with pride how many days it's been since something died. And yes, we're counting today with this zoo with nothing in it. And just for symmetry, we made sure on this side something's going. Wait, what died a what died a day ago? <laughs> Oh no. Going on. This poor bear right here seems to have lost their car inexplicably into this wall. Oh, you know what? This is a little speed? more realism. So let's go to my favorite tools special effects. Fire Ooh, breath. Like these water jets? <laughs> um, that might be a little too forceful, but let's give it a shot. Oh. Okay, well, that's absolutely terrifying. All right, buddy, <laughs> hold still. We're going in for more. This is if, like, the Terminator figured out how to cry. <laughs> I gotta admit, though, it kind of works. <laughs> you also may have noticed in the background we have a sunshine. Oh, looking appropriately oh, oh, confused. <laughs> but it might be that the sun is just looking at this. So first we're gonna put a couple of these nightmares out here. I want to believe if we put enough of these things down. Oh, dude. We're already at a horror museum. <laughs> I'm just thinking, uh, okay. I don't know what it was about like the 90s and early 2000s, but in like cartoons, there was like whatever show you had, there was always the one House of Horrors episode, right? Where you have, I don't know, Teen Titans or, you know, uh, Batman, the animated show. But you always have that one episode where it's the hero goes in a building and the, the villain has created this dark carnival kind of thing. And they're like stumbling through and oh, it's psychedelic and they're playing all these kinds of mind tricks on you and you got to overcome it. It was very interesting to me to consider what if I was in that kind of position, the loneliness of being in a place where I don't know what's going on and there's all these creepy things happening to you. I just imagine... <laughs> I just imagine going to a zoo at night and there is nothing there. Like there are no animals. There's just these creepy ass bear statues all with horrified expressions. There's no lights and you've got <laughs> this ambient feeling. I don't know. I'm like totally going off an imagination tangent. So I'm going to stop there. But it just made me shiver for a second, like internally. <laughs> Josh making nightmare fuel. You know, I it may not be nightmare fuel for everybody. I think I am going to see if I can uh, count that. Do I have nightmare fuel? I do not have nightmare fuel. But feel free if you also got that image to add nightmare fuel to your bingo card. <laughs> it's creepy than more creepy. I don't think it's happening. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. A truly royal dystopian welcome. You know what, though? It seems like something's <laughs> missing. Oh, right. Your ocular implants. <laughs> well, excuse me. You'll be complete soon. <laughs> okay, now <laughs> yes, this is like Bioshock. Better. It's like I'm going to the grand ballroom on the Titanic and everyone's here to see me. Oh, and I also gave one and only one of them the ability to breathe. That's the one to watch out for. What was I making again? A zoo? I always forget okay. that's... <laughs> This is like giving me the heebie-jeebies. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't. I feel like this shouldn't be giving me the heebie-jeebies. But looking down again, that nightmare carnival. It's dark. You see one statue just breathing. I don't want to go down this path right now. <laughs> we're supposed to do in Planet Zoo. Now that we've got all the basic amenities taken care of, I think it's time for the main attraction. It's time to invite some animals into our zoo. And I'm thinking right there is a great spot. I'm thinking brick this time. I mean, look at all these beautiful traits. Opaque, not climbable, watertight. Okay, in you go. Go ahead and make this a little taller. Now we're gonna- I think that counts for psychological warfare. I think so too. <laughs> The horror, the horror park entrance. Do I have psychological warfare? Am I back to not getting a bingo this time? These aren't animals. They're just statues, so no animal cruelty has occurred yet. Wow. No. Uh, unlucky. Unlucky roll for me. No psychological warfare. At a window. There we go. What a curiosity that is. Okay, here we go. Our first animal of the zoo. Well, hello there, giraffe friend. How's it going? You comfortable in there? Yeah, he's fine. We're not he's fine. <laughs> That's going to be animal cruelty and he's fine because we've got, is that asphalt? That looks like asphalt. That's pretty gray dirt if it's not asphalt. So asphalt plus small confined area, no greenery, no social circle. Yeah, that's animal cruelty. Not done though. We got to make it a little more, shall we say, magical. Hey, bear friend, can you help me out? Help me. <laughs> that's the spirit. <laughs> Have you just turned this oh. way? Yeah, good, good. Hey, do you mind if I adjust your eyeballs a little bit? Yeah, look to the sky. <laughs> That's what I like to see. Just provide a little refreshment to our friend there. How do you feel about this, friend? Waterboarded giraffe. Fine. It's not like it's gonna fill up with water or something. Later that day. 
Well, I gotta admit, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess it turns out this thing can hold water. Wait. Uh, okay. That filled up? Like that actually up, filled up? I don't know okay, so there's physics in this game. There is water physics. Like, le wait. Okay, no, he did a jump cut, so he, he might have added, like, a water object or something to that box. But honestly, the draft would have died anyway because he didn't give him any water or food. The vent is gone. There's a water tool. Oh, okay, so he, he's, he jump cutted to after he added water to, <laughs> to that. So he drowned an animal. So there's, there's a body count of one. <sighs> Rest in peace, Mr. Giraffe. It said watertight when he placed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will. I will count that as X hours later, even though he didn't say a number of hours. He did say later. Expecting. I guess it turns out this thing can hold water. <sighs> okay. Days since last animal death. Okay. I mean, we all knew this would happen. <laughs> Just even I didn't expect it quite so soon. Okay, same deal. We're gonna put a little window in it. See, there we go. That's what happiness looks like. Do you like being version 2.0? Forced forever to stare at your predecessor? Protesters have arrived at my zoo. But why? Is it the part where we just had an animal death? Because I assure you, this number can only go up from here. People <laughs> seem to be enjoying how confused this whole situation is you know I didn't think about this before Wait, isn't that the number like isn't that the number for time since the last animal death like days since the last animal death if it goes up that means he's not killing animals good thing right I don't think it's going up maybe I misunderstood buying the actual tiers of whatever animal these are okay so the park's been open for a little while and in that time we've built something that zoo patrons really seem to appreciate i wow. present to you the world's most comprehensive animal <laughs> slide okay. we're talking six amazing shoots each with corresponding animals so here's why these people are fighting <laughs> tooth and nail to get in line to buy this is like <laughs> this is like those um okay this might be dating me because i don't know if they use these anymore in malls when you used to go into shopping malls they would have those big funnels that were like just really rounded. They, they have like a little teeny hole and you put a little coin, like a penny or something in the side and it's like vertical and it slides in and it will just spin it around and around and around. And you do it around and around and around. And it literally takes like three minutes for the coin to stop spinning and go in the hole in the middle. And it's a money catch for them. So they make money. It's cool watching the, the penny. <laughs> the only thing is, this is Josh. And instead of it spinning round and around, it just falls straight in the water and it kills them. So that's nice. Buy their very own animal tears. Every time someone buys a bottle of tears of the animal of their choice, that corresponding animal is volunteered to hop down the super fun happy <laughs> slide of joy. See, doesn't that look fun? Look at that face of happiness. And well, because business is booming. Oh my God, look Hold at all on. the joy being. Okay, I was going to do a body count for this video. I'm not going to do a body count for this video. There's, there's at least 30 bodies right here. And I would have to pause and do pixel counting. And I, I don't want to do that. So <laughs> if you enjoyed the body count last time. Yeah, not happening this time. I will say this is ragdoll physics. Bread. That's so many animals. Don't crowd oh, yourselves. Oh yes. There's room for everybody. That is absolutely FPS slideshow. I don't have that. It appears, but if you got FPS slideshow, that that absolutely counts here. I want to say tortures NPCs, but that's not quite. Not quite it. Okay, that's. I think that's all I've got. Ah, uh, there we go. I'm sure they're all fine. At least someone's happy being forced to stare at the bones of all their friends. Well, while we have a captive audience, why can't I tell them to display a bunch of information about bones? That's fine. We'll just make our own display. See. Can I just put a sign on top of this? Here lies the bodies of those desecrated by Josh. I'm going to call this. Oh, wait, no, that's crimes against nature animals. Desecrates nature is land. This is absolutely crimes against nature. I think <laughs> I think Josh's cup is running over right now, but he needs to say it. <laughs> he said captive audience. Oh, OK screen not even in a way that makes sense there we go all the information you need actually i put another sign down below place at a height where only children can see it consider yourself educated. <laughs> everybody well, this seems like it was a big success so let's move on to something even more riveting like this giraffe friend just hanging out right here now you might be wondering Hi, what this guy's doing up here you see when they're ready to make a plunge they're gonna go down this chute which is gonna bounce them anywhere to the left center or right <laughs> we don't know where he's gonna go but there's a couple of targets he can hit if they're lucky they're gonna end up in this habitat right here of course, if they end up falling to the left, they're going to be dropped into this beautiful ch That reminds me of Super Mario Sunshine, where Mario is jumping down those pachinko-style levels. 
except it's really hard because the physics in that game are really janky. And so most of the time, Mario ends up falling off. But now it's a giraffe. I'm actually not phased by it falling in child daycare for some reason. Child daycare. Got a strong entrance leading to a beautiful drop. Well, I know where you're going anyway. Ah, oh, come on, kids. I'm sure you saw it coming this time. Not gonna lie, if every single time ended up in the daycare. He's just skipping past the part where he keeps on killing giraffes off screen. This is so bad. <laughs> you're so evil. Hey, kids, you get enough yet? First prize. Ah, well, that was fun. Oh, what now? Bear friend, why are you standing out here? Ah, oh, crap, I've seen Terminator. That doesn't seem good. Uh-oh. Yes, just calmly <laughs> make your way to the exits. I'm sure nothing bad's gonna happen. Oh, hey. Okay, I will admit that's not a great sign. <laughs> Maybe they just became self-aware to love us, right? I don't get it. Are you telling me there was consequences to our actions? Well, luckily, it seems to be like Five that's Nights at funny. Freddy's where stuff doesn't move unless you're not looking at it. That's actually pretty clever editing because I'm pretty sure in order to move all those things, he had to pause the game and then make those changes. That's cool. That being said, you are absolutely right, chat. That is absolutely torturing NPCs. So let's mark that and uh, move on to the next atrocity, I suppose. Does this count as overkill? It's uh, totally up to you. If you think it's overkill for, for regularly playing the game and then and then Josh's brand of overkill, go for it. I'm not gonna pick it yet because he hasn't scaled anything up. That's kind of what I I think of overkill as, but we'll see. Isn't that right, fellas? Luckily, I've got just the contingency plan to deal with this. A little something I've been keeping under wraps for emergencies only. Oh. Yep, it's what you think it is. Modeled after the Saturn he started the AI bear the tier moon. revolution. Our beautiful ticket out of here. Uh oh, something tells me it's time to move. All we need now is our pilot. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Commander Grace. Hey Grace, let's pick up the pace, okay? Time is not exactly <laughs> on our chopper. side. Maybe get to work on that startup sequence, okay? Grace, did you hear me, Commander? Does this thing work? Now, Grace, I don't want to tell you what to do. <laughs> Actually, no, I really do want to tell you what to do. But you might want to start that pre-sequence because there's like a thing happening out here, and I don't know how much longer you've got. <laughs> All right, let's get the hell out of here. Wait, wait, what? Hang on, hang on. So one, yes, Grace entered the chat, but does is that an actual animation in the game? Or is he literally like moving it little by little and pausing the game and just increasing the Z value? Is it just like a aesthetic decoration rocket or is it actually like blast off? Yeah, I'm counting Giga Overkill for all the bear statue placed in that scene. That's that's 100% fair. I think that's also <laughs> Josh style Giga Overkill. There was hundreds of of bear statues in there. We'll see uh, if he's actually in a moon in a moon map. Several days later. Well, Grace, I think you've really done it this time. If my calculations are correct, this appears to be the moon. I think this might have real zoo potential. Because you know what they always say, when you accidentally land on the moon, go ahead and make moon pies. So obviously for our moon zoo, we're going to need a place to put the animal. So first, let's establish some moon hallways. Oh, this must be there an actual go. moon these map then. go right to the shuttle, which we're going to connect to these beautiful moon domes I've made. Oh, and from here, we're just going to have so much moon fun. See, now we're talking. Give me a second to put some stuff down, and then I'll give you the grand tour. Oh. All right, it's time for a move. Maybe not. Because if you notice, these right here, these are decorative like poles. He lowered these down. This might just be like a glass walkway roof, and he's making it into a, a tunnel. He also said he made the moon hexagon thing, so it's custom. Yeah, this is custom. I don't think this is actually the moon. I'm not going to call it yet, but that's that's probably where I'm leaning right now. I would also say that fused object probably counts because he's been fusing objects all day in this game. Oh, vehicular chaos. We also got a ve vehicular chaos. Moon tour. Upon leaving the rocket, you're going to want to head down to the moon hub where we have an array of options to decide what we want to do next. Let's start here. <laughs> okay, real talk though, this isn't the bathroom. This is actually just Grace's quarters. Next up, we have this cruel joke that I've labeled fun. Really, it's just a giant maze. Mostly, I just want to give Grace something to get lost in. And really, but you what kind of see... zoo would it be if there wasn't a moon maze? <laughs> On the other well, how is it a moon maze? You can see everywhere you need to go. It's all glass. 
their hand, it does serve a purpose. Anyway, after you've had your fun, head on over to this mystery we discovered on the moon. Just this weird bottomless pit that I can't convince Grace to go into yet. And for the final why did on you our journey, the zoo. Why did Grace We've build a no tunnel there? We built this beautiful moon menagerie, complete with high ceilings, pressurized atmosphere just like on Earth, and a lot of space for our animals to roam around in. And as you can see, we haven't placed the animals yet. I figured we could do that together. As far as I know, this is all the animals we had on the ship. To my knowledge, they're also all... Let me guess, he's going to open up all of these boxes and they're going to be predator and prey and they're going to kill each other until the animals are all dead. And great job. You killed the zoo. Giraffes, because of course they are. Can't wait to try out our moon zoo. This is so exciting. Behold. Nope. They're all giraffes. Oh no, what's happening? <laughs> you guys okay? I mean, you were inside the dome. What happened? Hey, Grace, you let oxygen in here, right? Grace, that kills people. You were supposed to push the big green button that says oxygen. All right, well, I guess we got to deal with this mess okay. now. So I'm pretty sure these aren't going <laughs> to... Okay. Okay, I was wondering if the giraffes would just die when they get out on the moon planet. And if there's no auction, then they die. I don't know if this actually means that it is like an actual moon map. I guess he could have done it by having the giraffes be close to death and then put them in storage and then just do that a bunch, like starve them or whatever. You know, whatever Josh does to kill giraffes, you know. <laughs> Far be it from me to like get inside the mind of a killer. It, it, it reminds me of one of those things that I've always thought, like about games and game engines. Is how do you actually decide what is oxygenated and what's not? What what has atmosphere and what doesn't? Because atmosphere is like atmosphere is a fluid system, but it's large. Like when you're rendering a, a game engine world, game engines don't actually do particle simulations. I mean, they some of them do, and especially like the more high tech ones do. It's just very, very compute intensive and it would tank. It would tank any of your systems to make a particle system. Now, I know Unreal Engine 5 has the Nanite system. That's not quite the same thing. It's not like it, the game engine is rendering hundreds of millions of like air particles in the system. So it, all, all I'm saying is that you can't simulate how air works in real life. So most games will have kind of a Boolean system where it's like you have a property on every object that needs air. You know, are you in air or not? And most of the time, the engine like with water, you know, water is also a fluid and so most engines will have a level in the world where there is water and then there will be the textures for water and then water you know they do stuff to make it look like water and you know you just make the ground underneath the water level where you want there to be lakes and rivers and things you know for a lot of games if you just glitch through the ground you'll see the water level under the entire world but at the end of the day if you are submerged then you have a property change in your object that's like is submerged right or is underwater and if you're above it then you're above water then you can do things like swim animations or you know water sounds those types of things water physics so like if you're slower underwater then then that's how you would trigger it but for air you can't necessarily do that right you've got air everywhere and it's either you're in air or you're not so for space games i always wondered how do you actually tell the in-game objects whether or not they're in air or not you know if you're outside of like if you're outside the space station you don't have air I, I guess there's a couple ways you could do it. One way is you could have a, an invisible object, right? Or a, an, a transparent object that is like a box that is the exact same size and shape as your base station, for instance. And that way, when your character goes through into the transparent object, you could have like a switch. And then when you're outside of it, you don't have air. And then you need a spacesuit. Uh, another way you could do it is through triggers. Commonly in games, like I don't know how old this method is because you can get lots of glitches with them, but with games like Morrowind, like I've, I've done mods for Morrowind before, and in order to actually trigger travel from the outer world, so if you're just out in the world, in the open world, and you want to go inside a cave or inside a hut, or inside just any building. You need a trigger that says door. So when you interact with a door, it triggers, I'm going in here. And with Skyrim, for instance, you have a cave where you walk through the entrance, right? You can keep walking, but you hit the trigger first that says enter cave. So you could put a trigger for air. If you leave the space station, you walk through that trigger and it says suddenly no air. You could spoof it where you have no air at all. <laughs> and it's just a trigger that's saying whether or not you have air. So I, that that one's kind of buggy because you probably glitch through and avoid the trigger somehow, and then you'd have infinite air everywhere. And that's a pretty big bug for a game to have. But <laughs> being a lazy person and not actually researching it, I don't actually know how these systems work. So if you're a game designer, 
or a software developer who's messed with games, or you just have watched documentaries that talk about this kind of thing, let me know. How do how does air in space games work? Well, that was <laughs> a really long tangent because I, I don't know. I've just been thinking about that with games. I feel like I wanted to get into game development when I was in school, and I feel like the real world kind of killed my hopes and dreams there because video games are really it's a really tough industry like lots and lots of overtime lots of poor working conditions lots of crunch you know so i i in college when i was studying software i was I decided not to be a game developer but the more i think about it and the more i kind of dig into it it's fun solving these challenges and thinking about these and and looking at bugs and trying to fix things. Maybe you'll get into game development at some point. I don't know. Probably not. Game development's so hard, guys. I, I respect game developers so much. Can I do cat break? Come on. Soft boy has entered the chat. Cat burger. decompose here on the moon. So we're gonna do the next best thing. Dump them in a giant crater. All right, <laughs> come on everybody. Let's take a little trip outside. This is gonna be a real treasure for future generations to find. Do we have any more animals we can try this on now? Oh, we got one left? Hey, that was so nice of you to bring it down for us. Thanks for the special moon see, delivery. Good too. to see her out and about. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> Return to sender. Return to sender. Grace, did you even <laughs> check the package? Hey, Grace, are you back on the ship? I'm going to assume that's a no. Yep, get going, Grace. Initiate Operation Run for fun. And by fun, I mean for your life. And don't stop until you reach the rocket. Well, Grace, looks like we're two for two. I guess the moon belongs to the bears now. Well, that was a trip and a half. I guess we have no choice but to keep going for more crazy space adventures. From what I can tell, at least this time, we don't have any stowaways. Speaking of stowaways, you might be wondering, where did Grace go? Well, I made a little pit stop and dropped her off. I'm sure she'll be fine. So I think we're going to leave it there for now. Everyone on Mars, for nice. Grace, who's going <laughs> to die on the surface of Mars, and I'll see you next time. Well, I was hoping that he wouldn't kill many things. Unfortunately, he did kill every single thing that he brought to the moon. <laughs> now, was the moon actually a, a moon map? I don't know. I, if you know, let me know. I haven't played Planet Zoo yet. I think I actually will be adding it to my backlog because it seems like a fun game. I, I do like sandbox games where you can just get in there and make stuff. I do get burned out on them too, especially if there's no carrot to kind of like keep you going along, like quests of any type. So I'll probably play it, you know, a few times and, and just have fun with making something. It could be a moon map. It didn't really look like it. You know, the, the animals died immediately, but you know, like we said, it could be just because they were almost dead before they put him, you know, he packed him up. I do think since he made the custom like tubes and the hexagon, I think, I think I'm going to assume that it wasn't an actual moon map. And that if that's the case, then, you know, he didn't get there through an actual launch. Is Josh an alien swarm corrupting the planet to planet moon to moon? I think yes. <laughs> so that leads us to rating Josh on a scale of one to alien overlord. Josh is an alien overlord. I'm going to have to just go straight there. He killed so many animals this game. <laughs> killed so many animals this game. I did I did like the the T the B1000, the the bear 1000 terminator bit. Like that was fun. Surprisingly, Grace survived. Probably. How would we do on Bingo? Not great at all. How many can we? We definitely had that one. Exploits NPC AI. 
I think it might be a stretch, but he exploited the visitors AI to like run from the Terminators, <laughs> the exodus of the earth. Oh, desecrates danger how he buried the, the giraffes. Yes, I would agree with that. He wasn't sponsored. So exploits NPC AI. Is there an, is there a better argument for exploiting the NPC AI than having them run away from his, <laughs> his bear takeover? I, I, I don't think I can count exploits NPC AI. So almost a bingo. Well, I guess I'm not surprised I didn't get a bingo. I hope you did. <laughs> if you got a bingo, please put it down in the comments. Uh, I'd love to keep track of that. Well, I think that covers it for the video. If you like this video, then please subscribe. That's it. Lick that subscribe button. <laughs> like that subscribe button. YouTube doesn't like how often I edit and upload things. I honestly, I've kind of had to come to grips with not having all the time in the world and not being able to stay up till 4 a.m. every single night. So <laughs> I kind of have had to slow down and go at my own pace and, and just get out what I can when I can. The best way to get notified of, of videos when I post is by subscribing. So if you can do that, that would be lovely. If not, that's okay. Only do it if you like my videos. But thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thanks for going on this psychotic adventure with me through Let's Give It Out's Planet Zoo videos. And uh, hope you have a wonderful evening, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.